Hey everyone, Sean Allison again. This will be a spearfishing trip to North Ant Hill Rig out of Corpus Christi, Texas on uh, June 3rd. Uh, red snapper season just opened, so the plan is for me and Atlee DuBose, who you see here, uh, to do a dive here on North Ant Hill, get down close to uh, 120s, and uh, shoot some red snapper. Forecast was two to three foot seas, ended up being four to five with an occasional six, making this a three hour boat ride. We're about 35 miles offshore here. Normally this would take us about an hour and a half to get out there. But uh, due to the rough seas, we're kind of on and off the throttle. Pretty pretty slow on the way out there. But uh, we finally made it out there after three hours. Atlee here, he is experienced. He's done deep dives before. He's done some spear fishing before. Uh, but not really both at the same time. Plan is to go down to 120 and get our two red snapper. That The red snapper season just opened. Uh, and those snapper tend to be pretty deep. So the plan is to go down to 120. So we get in the water here, you can see the water's kind of cloudy. This is only maybe 20 foot. You already see some Bermuda chubs, the usual suspects here. Uh, this line's tied off down at the depth of about 20 foot. There is a buoy. We're tied to the uh, buoy chain here. See Atlee coming down. He's got the gun in his hand. I would suggest always clip that gun off. You're really going to need those hands for the descent and the ascent. There tends to be quite a bit of current uh, out here offshore, kind of pushing on you. Having one hand uh, tied up all the time, holding that gun. You're going to end up dropping that gun. Uh, I really recommend clipping it off so you can use both hands. Anyway, you see all the growth on the chain here. It's kind of slippery. Heading down, you're already starting to see some gray snapper with a black back and the black tail. Those are all small gray snapper. See some jack crevel off in the distance there, those bigger fish. Uh, those crevel are not worth shooting. These grays are a little smaller. Again, we're looking for red snapper, so we're not shooting these small grays. As we get down to the rig here, the water's getting a little colder, and it's getting a little clearer, the viz is opening up a little bit, you can kind of see across the rig a little bit more. Of course, there's these small grays absolutely everywhere. Again, there's about a steady one knot current in our face, uh, which we're kind of fighting here a little bit. So, uh, you'll see me kind of grab the rig, kind of pull myself along here quite a bit. Uh, I don't like to waste a lot of energy kicking my feet, so we get, we're down on 40, telling him go ahead and load up before we start heading down, that way the guns are ready. I'll skip this part of the video, but I load the guns up here, and uh, I'm signaling to him, okay, we're ready to go, let's head down, we are going to follow this angled pipe all the way down, I don't like to free descend in open water, you're fighting the current the whole time, there's nothing to hold on to, if a big fish swims up that you're going to shoot, like a big cobia or something like that, uh, there's nothing to grab a hold to, so uh, heading down here, you see a creole fish swimming across, those guys are pretty common on the rig, Spanish hogfish up here on the right, that yellow guy, those are pretty common on the rig here. Some blue runners there. So I'm heading down the pipe here. Notice I'm right on top of the pipe. I am grabbing it, kind of pulling myself along. That allows me to use less energy and therefore use less air. My air will last a little longer. I'll take a little less nitrogen on, things like that. But it just makes the descent a little easier, use a little bit less energy. Uh, checking on Atlee back there, he's just kind of following me. Uh, you see this junction in the pipe here, lots of grays here. Those grays really like the structure. Anywhere you have any kind of junction, like at the corners or an X in the pipe, things like that, those uh, grays tend to kind of bunch up. So the 120-foot horizontals are coming into view now. Viz is a little bit better, getting down here a little deeper. Still a little bit cloudy, but a pr pretty good viz, I would call it. So getting down here, down at this junction, you see me flipping the safety off in a hurry. There's a huge Cubera snapper off in the distance. You can see swimming left to right down there. That big fish, he's probably a 30 or 40 pound uh, Cubera snapper. Definitely too big to be a red snapper. So I'm kind of going after him, but he ain't having it. He saw this coming and uh, he said, I'm out. So I'm uh, kind of watching him. I'm hoping he'll get curious and kind of double back and get a close look at us. Uh, but he doesn't. He just kind of takes off. Notice, there's no red snapper on the video at this point. Just some little grays kind of swimming around. Don't really see any reds. There's a horse-eyed jack swimming across there. Uh, some small stuff. But you really don't see any red snapper just yet. Again, we're at 120. These are the, the second set of horizontals is down here at 120. So we're pretty deep. This is as deep as we plan to go. Uh, and we're just going to kind of sit here and shoot whatever we can. So I'm looking for that Cubera. He, he's kind of swam off at this point. I've kind of bailed on him. So I tell Atlee, just kind of level off. We're going to stay here, hunt for what we can. I'm kind of looking around. Some horse side jacks there. Just kind of surveying what, what I can shoot, what Atlee can shoot. Turn around. You see an Amberjack swim behind Atlee there. Uh, some Red Snapper are starting to kind of show up here. There's an Almaco behind Atlee there as well. Uh, again, you can start seeing the red snapper come up and uh, taking a look at us here. 
again we're not going to have much time at this depth so uh right off the bat we're just going to start shooting here uh, pick one kind of shoot down at him hit him uh sorry adley this is kind of my bad my fish swims right of course my fish swims right into him I'm trying to tangle him up on my cable already so kind of swim underneath his gun there so he's not pointing it at me Gonna get back up and kind of sit on top of the, the rig here to deal with this fish. I did not get a great shot on him. Of course, the Amberjack's gonna come zooming in. He knows something just happened. That He senses that fish struggling. He kind of zoomed in to see what if he can get a free meal out of it. Uh, so my normal routine here is sit on the rig, get control of that fish. You see me kind of gilling him there, gonna kind of throat him. I want to string him, get my spear tip out, get the gun reloaded, and repeat. Again, we do not have much time at this depth. It's less than 10 minutes. So uh, we got to kind of move quickly. So got that fish under control, stabbed him. Little Almaco Jack, you saw just swim through there. Uh, got him brain, so he's not fighting me the whole time. Again, that was kind of a crappy shot placement. Kind of hit him in the back end. It's going to mess up a little bit of meat. It's good enough to retain the fish, but uh, that's not ideal. Going to mess the meat up. The fish is going to fight a lot more. See, Atlee has shot himself a red snapper as well. So we kind of both got our first fish here. See a lot more red snappers starting to show up now. They're all kind of coming up from deeper to kind of take a look at us. I'm going to unclip my stringer. I never unclipped it from my body. I just opened the hook on it, stabbed it through his eyes, and clipped him off. Uh, still got my gun through him. So now that I've got him clipped off, he can't go anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and remove the tip. Notice my gun's not clipped to me. I let it just kind of float out of the way. That helps keep me from getting tangled in that cable. So I'm going to pull the gun back down to me, get my shaft back in. Atlee's dealing with his snapper here. Uh, again, we don't have much time. We're trying to kind of move quickly. We're only allowed two red snapper out here in Federal Waters. So we're just trying to get our two fish and, and immediately head back up. So he pulls his string around. He's going to start stringing his. You see these red snapper really starting to kind of school up on us now. Quite a few more. When we first got here, there were none. Now there's already dozens of red snapper kind of right in our face. So, again, I'm quickly trying to get my gun reloaded. I want to get this second shot. Uh, we are absolutely going to run out of time very quickly down here. So, if you're lucky, you're going to get two shots and get two fish before it's time to head back up. You really don't have any time down here. Amberjack's just kind of cruising around. He's just going to keep kind of buzzing us here. Atlee's got his fish strung. He's notice he's got his gun clipped off. Uh, normally, I wouldn't do that. You're more like you got more cable kind of hanging around you. You're more likely to kind of get tangled up in that stuff. But again, this is kind of first. I'm telling him sit on the rig uh, so we can save a little energy. He's, he's kind of kicking quite a bit here. Again, this is his first time going this deep and shooting fish this deep. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of a learning experience for for him. So, you know. That's just how it goes. So again, you can see the, at the red snapper are absolutely just swarming us now. They're the same size, though. I'm kind of looking around to see if I can't spot something a little bit bigger to shoot at. But they all look pretty average. They're, they're all about the same. Some are a couple inch, inches bigger than the others. So I just kind of pick me one, shoot him. Of course, I shoot downwards. It's always better to shoot downwards. That shaft will retain a little bit of its speed, a little bit more of its punch. Um, but I hit my second fish here. Of course, he's absolutely going nuts. I got a better shot on him. Kind of hit him through the gill plate where I want it. I don't want to be able to... I don't want to have to destroy any meat hitting that fish. Look down. You see my computer blinking. We're down to five minutes remaining already. It's basically, it's it's time to go. Uh, again, you're only going to get a couple of shots at this depth before it's time to absolutely just go. It's time to take off. No time to waste. So you see, uh, I hit him through the gill plate. I'm going to finish him off real quick so he's not fighting me. If I do run out of time, I won't bother stringing him. I would just wrap the, take the shaft, lay it alongside the gun, take the cable, and just wrap it all around the gun, carry him up shallower, and deal with him up shallower. But uh, I still have a couple of minutes here, so I'm going to go ahead and stab my stringer through him, get him clipped off to my stringer. Uh, I did get a through and through penetration shot here, which is not ideal. My shaft's hanging out the other side. Now I've got to take it, pull the cable through, shove my shaft back through. Uh, I would really prefer this not to happen. It's just a little bit of extra crap to have to deal with to shove my whole shaft back through here. But I poke it back through backwards, pull it all out, and then my tip's going to get stuck. Then i got to push the tip back through. Uh, now, again, the gun's not clipped to me. It kind of just floats out of the way, which is, is what I prefer. Take a look around, make sure no sharks are moving in on us here. Uh, my tip comes out a separate spot, uh, at least indicating to me he's got to go he's out of time he's getting low on air so he's asking me should i go ahead and head up 
I basically tell him, yes, head up. I'm struggling with my tip now. Uh, my, my tip got turned, created a new hole coming out of this fish. So I am going to have to kind of pull my knife out and carve the tip out. That also is not ideal. That's going to take me extra time. And honestly, I'm only going to spend a few seconds trying to carve this tip out before I just give up and carry him up. But luckily, I get the tip out here. Uh, again, you can see the red snapper absolutely just swarming around us. They're absolutely everywhere. Again, they're all about the same size. But uh, get my tip out of the fish here. And it is time to go. So I'm going to start heading across to the horizontal or the uh, angle pipe and start heading back up. So we get up to 40. Uh, we do our safety stop. We just complete our safety stop. And we are headed back up the uh, line to the surface now. Get back in the boat. This will complete dive number one. I got my two red snapper. Uh, Atlee got one on this dive. Uh, during this surface interval in the boat, we did a little bit of rod and reel fishing and Atlee was able to get his second red snapper. So we've been on the surface for an hour. Now we're preparing to start dive number two. So we've geared back up again. You see this is uh, John Barrera here in the white shirt. He's the boat owner, uh, has a boat operation here. He's uh, running this charter for us today. So I'm going to roll over the side. Again, we're, on, we're going to start dive two here. Given we went to 120 feet on the first dive, the plan on this dive is to just go down to 40. Uh, I'm going to take my gun here. Atlee's going to leave his behind. Uh, we're going to stay at 40, and the plan is to just shoot small fish. We've already got our red snapper. There's not much point in going kind of deep. So we're going to shoot gray snapper, Almaco jacks, yellow jacks, you know, any of that kind of smaller stuff here. Again, these grays are kind of smallish. Uh, for inshore, these would be considered good grays. For offshore, eh, they're kind of small. They're kind of hard to shoot. But uh, again, at the junction here at the corner, you see gray snapper absolutely everywhere. I'm kind of looking around, seeing if there's something a little bit bigger than worth shooting at. Don't really see a whole lot. All these grays are about the same size here. A couple of Spanish hogfish with the yellow tails there. Jack Crevel down there a little bit deeper. Uh, this fish here is a rock hind. Kind of swimming up just to get a little video on him. I'm kind of point, trying to point this out to Atlee. Atlee's coming up on me here. I'm kind of pointing at the fish. I explain to him later what these fish are. But again, these are rock hinds. There's going to be another one coming from the left here. Oh. Swimming across. That's another little rock hind here. See the little black dots on his back. These are cousins to groupers, so they don't really fall in the grouper bag limit. Uh, those have no limits. Uh, they're hard to shoot, though. They're always right up against the rig. And uh, you don't want to destroy your tip, so spear pull is pretty good for those raw kinds. So here's a gray snapper. That was kind of a long shot for such a small fish. Kind of hard to hit that far away. Again, I was kind of shooting down, uh, but got a good shot on him. Got a good hit. Pull him up. Uh, he ain't a, He's not a monster or anything, but uh, he'll definitely uh, fit on a plate. And again, the goal up here shallow is just to kind of shoot smaller fish. After Atlee left his gun behind, at this point he's just kind of following me around. Trying to get a little experience watching me observing what I'm doing here. So there's a yellow jack down below me. They kept kind of buzzing by us. Decided to take a shot on him. Of course I missed. Uh, that's just kind of part of spear fishing. I'm moving along a little bit here. I see those yellow jacks again. At this point I kind of need a little bit of revenge for missing that first one. So a couple more yellow jacks come buzzing by us here. You see me fighting the currents, pushing me, pushing my gun to the side. Making this a little hard to aim. But uh, kind of take a quick shot on him there as he's trying to leave. Missed him again. And that's part of spear fishing. You're going to get some, you're going to miss some. Uh, especially with these smaller fish that are kind of keep their distance and they're moving kind of quick. They, they can be kind of hard to hit. So third try on a yellow jack here. Take my time. Get a better, better aim there. I was shooting a little low. Aimed a little bit higher. Hit that guy. And I got a good stick on him. I'll pull him up here in a second. You'll get a little bit of a closer look at him. Again, they're not much bigger than the gray snapper, but they have no no bagger size limits, and they are pretty good to eat. So he'll go on the stringer with that with that gray, and uh, he'll go on the table just the same. So doing a little bit more swimming around, just kind of swimming circles on the top of the rig here, looking for grays we're shooting at. I see an okay gray there. That's a that's a decent one. He's not a monster, but uh, of course he uh, immediately goes behind the pipe. I'm gonna try to ambush him on the bottom side of course he's a little far away a little too far for me to shoot at he doubles goes back up again so i'm going to come over the top of the pipe of course he's swimming away from me the whole time here and uh he's getting a little far out there uh so kind of moving forward just a little bit he's just close enough and i'm shooting downward that i am able to take a little bit of a long shot but i do get me another gray here
get him to me, get him strung up. Of course, I'm going to kind of skip the uh, string apart on this this part of the video and just kind of stick to the shots. Um, so now kind of shot three fish. I've got I've got some fish. I've handed off the gun to Atlee here. He's ch we're chasing down a yellow jack, I'm trying to let him get a shot on the yellow jack here. The yellow jack sees us coming a mile away. He's not having it. He's swimming away. Atley kind of takes a Hail Mary shot here, and uh, he's a little too far away. Kind of ran out of cable before the shaft got there. So that's kind of the end of it, though. Uh, thanks for watching the video, and hope to see you guys on the next one.